In this problem, we're given two forces. We're given one force F, and F makes an angle of theta degrees with the y-axis, and we're given a force of 600 pounds. And this 600 pound force makes an angle 60 degrees with the x-axis. We're asked that if our resultant is to be 1,200 pounds vertically, so that means along the y-axis, like this, what is theta, what is this angle right here, and what is f? How long is this vector? So let's start by drawing what we know. If we start that, we're going to have some vector f. So this has a length of f. We're going to have one vector that's 600 pounds. And we can draw a parallelogram. We can move uh, by vector addition. We can do 600 plus f. And we can do f plus 600. And with this, we have our parallelogram. And we have our resultant force. We know that our resultant force is in the vertical direction. And it's going to be uh, 1,200 pounds. So this is going to be 1,200. And from this, we can fill in some of our angles. We know that this angle right in here, this angle right here, is going to be 60 degrees. So if that's 60 degrees, that means this interior angle right here must be 30 degrees because this is a right triangle. So right in here, we know this is 30 degrees. And we know that this angle in here is theta. So we know that these opposite angles, we know that on this side, this needs to be 30 degrees. And on this side, this needs to be theta. So let's draw our triangle by itself. When we draw that triangle, we're going to have, here's F. Here's my 1,200 pounds. And this is going to be 600. We know that this is our 30 degrees. And we know this is theta. We're trying to figure out two things. One, what is F and one is theta. So first, let's look what we have. We have two angles, uh, two sides, one angle. So let's look for F and let's use the law of cosines. To remind you what the law of cosines is, say we have a triangle like this and we have three sides, so A, B, and C. Now the angle across from each of these sides, so the angle across from A right here is going to be alpha. The angle across from B right here is going to be beta. And the angle across from C right here is going to be uh, gamma. And the two relationships we have are the law of sines and the law of cosines. So the law of cosines, if I want to solve for what C is, C is going to be equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared minus 2 times AB times the cosine of gamma. And this gamma is across from the side that we're looking for. The law of sines says that my side length of A over the sine of alpha is equal to my side length of B over my sine of beta, which is equal to my side length of C times the sine of gamma. And for the law, law of sines, it's A over its opposite angle, B over its opposite angle, and C over its opposite angle, gamma. Now when we're trying to find our side length, it really helps to try to use the law of cosines if we can. Uh, law of sines sometimes results in an ambiguous case. So if possible, to find the length, it's better to use the law of cosines. You can use the law of sines if you know all three of the angles. But in this case, we don't. So let's 
use the law of cosines. So f is going to be my c. So f is going to be equal to the square root. And now it doesn't really matter. So it doesn't matter which side's uh, a and which side's b, as long as we keep it consistent. So we're going to have uh, 1,200 squared plus 600 squared minus 2 times the 1,200 times 600 times the cosine of, and this is going to be 30 degrees because the angle that's opposite F is going to be my 30 degrees. So it's going to be the cosine of 30. If I put that in my calculator, 1200 squared plus 600 squared minus 2 times 1200 times 600 times the cosine of 30 and take the square root of that, I get this is equal to F is going to be equal to 743.6 and we're in pounds. So that's the force I need to apply at F in order to get my resultant vertical. Now what angle do I need to apply F? Well now that we know what F is, so F is equal to 743.6. I can use the law of co uh, the law of sines because I I now know this side and its opposite angle and I know this side and I can solve for its opposite angle. So if I use the law of sines, the law of sines is going to say that 600 over the sine of theta is going to be equal to 743.6 over the sine of 30. Now this is going to, uh, if we cross multiply, what we're going to have is 600 times the sine of 30 uh, is equal to 743.6 times the sine of theta. And so what we're going to do is we're going to divide this by 743. Point six, and we're going to take the inverse sine of this. So right here, this is going to be the inverse sine. And that's going to give us what our angle theta is equal to. And that's going to tell us that our angle theta is equal to 23.8 degrees. Now that means we need to apply this force at an angle of 23.8 degrees from the vertical in order and give it a force of 743.6 pounds in order to have our resultant force that's completely vertical.